In this part I will explain the basic math behind the k-means algorithm so that you will understand how it works in detail. Remember the algorithm identifies groups or clusters of data points in a multidimensional space. We can think of a cluster as comprising a group of data points whose interpoint distances are small compared with the distances to the points outside of the cluster. We can formalize this notion by first introducing a set of d-dimensional vectors, mu k, where k goes from 1 to capital K, in which mu k is a prototype associated with the kth cluster. As we see shortly, we can think of the mu k as representing the centers of the clusters. Our goal is then to find an assignment of data points to clusters, as well as a set of vectors mu k, such that the sum of these squares of the distances of each data point to its closest vector mu k is a minimum. Okay, now for each data point xn, we introduce a corresponding set of binary indicator variables r and k. R and K is element of 0 and 1, where K goes from 1 to K, describing which of the K clusters the data point Xn is assigned to. So that if data point Xn is assigned to cluster K, then R and K is equal to 1, and if Xn is not assigned to cluster K, then R and K would be equal to 0. We can then define an objective function it is sometimes also called distortion measure and it would look like this. J is equal to the sum going from N to capital N of the sum going from K to capital K of R and K and the square of Xn minus mu K, which represents the sum of the squares of the distances of each data point to its assigned vector mu K. Our goal is then to find values for the r and k and the mu k so as to minimize j. Remember, in the last section we discovered that we can do this iteratively with two successive steps which optimize the mu k. First we choose some initial values for the mu k. Then in the first phase we minimize j with respect to the r and k, keeping the mu k fixed. In the second phase, we minimize j with respect to the mu k, keeping r and k fixed. We repeat this two-stage optimization until convergence. The r and k is determined in the step where we measured our distances from each cluster center to each data point. Formally, it would look like this. r and k is equal to 1 if k is the arc minimum over j of the square distance and r and k is 0 otherwise. So let's go through an example here. For each data point in each class we look at our r. So if we look at data point 1 for class 1, that would be r11, we look at the distance from data point x1 to every cluster center mu j. The distance here is squared. Then we determine which of the center arguments j is the smallest number in this calculation and set this argument equal to k. If the statement is true, we have found the minimum distance, hence the correct cluster where data point x1 is assigned to. So we set r and k to 1. If the statement is not true, we set r and k equal to 0. Now we have our calculation of r and k, which corresponds to redrawing the separation line, or decision boundary, of the classes. In this step, mu k does not change. It is held fixed. In the next step, however, we do it the other way around. We optimize mu k and hold r and k fixed. The objective function j is a quadratic function of mu k. Remember, this is a function which indicates an error measure. We want to get the minimum value of this function. To find a minimum of a function, we have to take its derivative and set the derivative to zero. So let's do that. The derivative of j would be 2 times the sum 
from n to capital N of R and K times xn minus mu k. And then we set this equal to zero, which can easily solve for mu k to give mu k is equal to this expression. So that's it. This is our update rule for the means, because the denominator in this expression is equal to the number of points assigned to cluster k. And that is everything we need to implement this standard form of the k-means algorithm. The steps would be the following. First, we initialize our mu k. We could pick two random data points from within the dataset or pick another initialization method, which will be discussed later. Second, we calculate R and K holding mu K fixed. The third step is to calculate mu K holding R and K fixed. We then repeat this procedure until convergence. So this would then be the whole theory of K-means. In the following videos I will talk about advantages and disadvantages of the method and how to actually implement and use it. I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you next time.